This year has already seen a bunch of great Android flagships without the Pro or the Plus moniker suffix to them. We got the OnePlus 12, the iQOO 12, the Samsung Galaxy S24 as well. All fantastic phones. And now we have this the Xiaomi 14. As a team, we've actually been using the Xiaomi 14 across Europe. We use it in Spain, Lisbon, and Germany. And Sanjay has been using the black unit, I've been using the green unit, and we've tested it extensively. So how did the Xiaomi 14 hold up? Is it a great flagship experience? Are the cameras really likable? See what I did there? Well, we'll find the answer to all that and more in this review, so stay tuned till the end if you're here for the first time. I'm Ashad. you're watching Track and Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. You know, when Xiaomi first gave us the briefing for the Xiaomi 14, they were insistent on not calling this a small or a compact phone. And I understand where they're really coming from because customers don't seem to be preferring the small phone. In fact, even iPhone mini was discontinued. So is this really a small or compact phone? Well, I'd say it's in the Goldilocks size for phones. Generally, most of us here at Track and Tech think that the 6.4 inch screen size is the ideal size for most people. And the Xiaomi 14 has a 6.36 inch screen size. Of course, it's in a very nice and compact form factor too. But most importantly, the Xiaomi 14 is beautifully constructed and it feels no less premium than a Samsung or an Apple iPhone. In fact, I actually prefer the build quality and the in-hand feel of the Xiaomi 14 to its competitors like the OnePlus 12 or the iQOO 12 SL. Of course, those are bigger phones, but this feels more premium. And the glass and metal sandwich design of the Xiaomi 14 is only about 8.2 millimeters slim and it weighs under 200 grams at about 193, 194 grams. And like I said, the size of the phone is perfect for most hands for them to be able to actually reach the top of the phone with the thumb and not have to do some hand gymnastics with the phone. If I have one concern with the design of the phone, it has to be the camera module, which juts out a lot from the rear. Also, the design has been slightly changed. The Xiaomi 13 actually had a block pattern design, which I actually preferred over this plain camera module. Also, considering that huge camera bump, there is a lot of table wobble when you place it on a flat surface. But thankfully, despite being top heavy, uh, the phone's weight distribution has been managed really well, so it doesn't topple out of your hands. As for the rest of the flagship basics, Xiaomi leaves no stone unturned. You get IP68 rating, the Type-C port at the bottom is USB Gen 3.2, and you also get Cornigola glass victus protection on the front as well. The glass protection on the rear is unknown. Uh, Xiaomi hasn't mentioned what exactly it's been using, but yeah, I mean, it's glass. So all in all, the Xiaomi 14 has a premium design. It looks very good, and it's available in three colors, but but we've got the green one and the black one. And I really like this green color, the jade green color of the phone. Even the black one with its matte finish does look very good too. However, the main reason why I like the Xiaomi 14 is its display experience. You get a flat 6.36 inch OLED panel with extremely slim bezels on all four corners. And therefore you get a fantastic screen estate. Plus this is an LTPO display with adaptive sync technology, which means that the refresh rate can sync between 1 to 120 hertz, depending on what content is playing on your screen. Also, I tested the display in the original pro color mode tuning and the color Color accuracy is very close to neutral, very similar to what I was seeing on the MacBook Air, which is fantastic. If you prefer a vibrant display with punchier colors, you'd get that setting as well, so you can switch to that. What's also available on almost every single Xiaomi phone that we've tested lately is the support for Dolby Vision. And of course, you do get HDR video support on YouTube as well. And the HDR tuning has been done really well with really smooth gradation between the highlights and the shadows, and content looks exceptionally good on this phone. Plus, the peak brightness while watching HDR content reaches 3000 nits, and the typical brightness is 1000 nits when you're taking it outdoors and using it outdoors. The touch response rate of the display is 240 Hz. It's very responsive. The in-display fingerprint scanner is an optical one and it's very fast to unlock. Absolutely no problem there. The haptic feedback has also been tuned well. It's not the best or the tightest haptic feedback, but what I particularly like about Hyper OS on Xiaomi 14 is the, you know, a vibration feedback that you get while changing the volume or when you're unlocking the phone with the in-display fingerprint scanner. All of that has been done really, really well. As for the stereo speakers, they sound good. Nothing really groundbreaking. Uh, why don't you take a listen to it right next to the Galaxy S24 and let me know what you guys think. The other thing that Xiaomi doesn't ever compromise on is high-res audio support. So you get support for 24-bit, 192kHz audio, especially if you have an external DAC that you can connect to the Type-C port. That apart, you also get support for LHDC and LDAC high-res Bluetooth codecs, and it works absolutely fine. So overall, when it comes to the display and multimedia experience on the Xiaomi 14, I absolutely love it. Now, I didn't expect the Xiaomi 14 to be a performance monster, 
but it doesn't disappoint. With respect to specs, you get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 system on chip, you get LPDDR5 X RAM, that is 12 GB of LPDDR5 X RAM, and you also get UFS 4.0 storage, 512 GB. That apart, Xiaomi also has the virtual RAM and virtual storage option for whatever it's worth. So we ran our benchmark tests and we ran it in the performance mode, and in Antutu, 2, it scores the lowest, lower than even the OnePlus 12 or, you know, the iQoo 12. But it does beat the Samsung Galaxy S24 with the Exynos 2400 for what it's worth. What I do like about the Xiaomi 14's performance tuning is that when you actually use the phone in performance mode, it doesn't throttle too much. In our standard CPU throttle test where we engage 40 threads for 30 minutes, we got a stability score of 82% and uh, we also got a stability score of 69% when we ran it in regular mode, not the non-performance mode basically. And in both the modes, the CPU is more stable than the OnePlus 12. But you must know that since Xiaomi doesn't throttle the performance a lot, the phone tends to get hot in performance mode, especially when you're running uh, you know, the tests for a long duration. We did also run the Genshin Impact test. We played it for 30 minutes at highest graphics and 60 frames per second. And we got a very respectable average FPS of 59 and the peak temperature, the device skin temperature was about 44.1 degrees. Again, pretty respectable numbers, but do know that if you do push this phone for performance, or if you're gaming a lot on this phone, it will get hot. But if you're using the Xiaomi 14 for basic tasks like email, social media, you know, camera, all of that works absolutely fine. In fact, it works exceptionally well. It's fast, it's responsive, and the phone doesn't run hot that time. So how's the battery? Well, inside you get a 4,610 mAh battery. In our testing, it lasted us four and a half hours to five hours of screen on time. Of course, we are very heavy users, so it's, about average, I would say. And unfortunately, we've been spoiled silly by the kind of battery life that we got with phones like the OnePlus 12 and even the iQoo 12 for that matter. And therefore, the Xiaomi 14's battery life seems slightly uh, disappointing in comparison. But then again, it's a smaller phone, so keep that in mind. Also, you do get a 90 watt charger inside the box and the phone can charge from zero to 100 in about 31 minutes, which is not bad. And you also get support for 50 watt wireless charging support as well. So yeah, for what it's worth, you can buy a separate charger and you know charge faster wirelessly. With respect to network connectivity, we had absolutely no problem. Xiaomi 14 supports as many 5G bands as you can think of. You get support for Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, NFC as well. The call quality is fantastic. We got 5G network almost everywhere we went in Europe. So good stuff, Xiaomi. Now talking about the software, the Xiaomi 14 runs HyperOS based on Android 14. And Xiaomi promises 4 plus 5 years of software updates as well. Now, visually, HyperOS is not too different from MIUI, but there are a lot of under the hood changes and a lot of feature additions as well. Now, by under the hood changes, I mean the memory expansion, the storage expansion, all of that has come in. That apart, the OS install itself is very light and therefore the animations, the UI, all of that feel extremely smooth. In fact, in terms of UI animations, the smoothness is better than One UI, but of course the animations are faster on One UI. And with respect to features, I really like the floating window implementation. You can actually have a smart sidebar and from there you can access your recent apps and put the apps in floating window immediately. All of that is done very well. In fact, you can have a floating window on top of a split screen as well. Plus, there are a lot of other options to tinker around with. The OS is becoming more and more premium now, which is a good thing. But I must tell you guys this, there are still some dark patterns when you set up the phone initially, something that Xiaomi can avoid for the future. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they will do it. And as for the bloatware situation, there is there are no bloatware apps. There are third-party apps that are pre-installed, some of which could be useful for you. And if it's not useful for you, then you can, of course, uninstall them as well. There is absolutely no problem there. All right, let's finally talk about the cameras on the Xiaomi 14. So what you get on the Xiaomi 14 is a 50MP primary camera. It's the Light Fusion 900 sensor. It's a 1 by 1.31 inch sensor as well. That apart, you also get a 50 megapixel 3.2x, you know, floating telephoto camera with which you can also shoot macro shots. And you also get a 50MP 14 millimeter wide or 115 degree wide ultra wide angle camera as well. And finally, there's a 32MP selfie camera as well. With that out of the way, let's get down to the quality of the pictures and the videos. So the primary camera captures a good amount of details and there's absolutely no over sharpening from what I could tell. For instance, in this photo, you can see the texture of my facial hair and the acne on my skin clearly. But it goes without saying that the 24 megapixel outputs of the iPhone 15 would have captured more details in this situation. In the second sample, the intricate details on the statue of King Joe's one and the horse crushing the snakes is also clearly visible here. So the Xiaomi 14 is pretty good, I'd say, in terms of details and sharpness. Now with the phone and the Leica collaboration, you do get two different Leica looks that you can choose. You can choose Leica Authentic or Leica Vibrant. And evidently, as the name suggests, the Leica Vibrant mode boosts the colors to an extent where in certain scenes, like this one of the red drink, it is badly reproduced. Here, the Authentic one looks good. On the contrary, in certain scenes with a lot of contrast, the Leica Authentic's contrast scene can get 
too contrast heavy, sucking the life out of the picture sometimes. I would definitely gravitate towards a Leica Vibrant version of this taco here. The situation is similar in this final one as well. The Leica Vibrant looks better than Leica Authentic. Which is why what I noticed is that when I was shooting with the Xiaomi 14, I was generally picking the Leica Vibrant mode more often than not, which is very surprising to me because otherwise, you know, I prefer the more authentic version of the picture. But Leica Authentic is a little too contrast heavy for me. Now, when it comes to the HDR performance in medium dynamic range scenes like this one here, the Xiaomi 14 impresses. Even in the second shot, the highlights and the shadows have been maintained really well to render a very good final image. It's a very complex shot like you can tell but it's done a good job however in certain scenes with a heavy backlight xiaomi's algorithm still overblows the highlights i saw that happen a lot in fact now moving on to low light shots from the xiaomi 14 they can look really impressive this shot of this gorgeous hotel has a lot of details the light control is fantastic too and it looks exactly like how my eyes saw the hotel at that specific point of time where the xiaomi 14 also hits a home run is when you're shooting people you generally get fantastic rendition of the skin with close to neutral skin tones even in complex scenes like this low light one, you will appreciate how good it looks. Now moving on to portrait shots in the standard portrait mode, Xiaomi 14's algorithm punches into 60mm with the telephoto by default, which is kind of weird because the 3.2x telephoto camera should use the 75mm and if you want to shoot in 75mm, you have to choose the master style portrait. In the master styles, you've got a documentary style 35mm portrait, you've got a swirly bokeh at 50mm, you've got a standard 75mm portrait shot and you also get a soft focus at 90mm. By the way, with this 3.2x telephoto, you can also shoot super macro shots and they look absolutely absolutely impressive. But what's also really, really impressive is that 50 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. It's a really wide ultra wide angle camera. The camera itself takes very detailed shots in daylight. The color sense consistency with the primary camera is fantastic. And even the low light ultra wide angle shots, I could frame some really good shots with the phone. Good stuff, Xiaomi. Now the 3.2x telephoto camera is the one that I use the most. I really like the black and white filter, uh, the Leica filter that you get with it. So we ended up taking a lot of shots with the 3.2x telephoto camera and the kind of shots we got with it were fantastic. Now the selfie camera, on the other hand, the 32 megapixel selfie camera, it's a bit of a hit and a miss. Sometimes the, you know, selfie camera takes good skin tones and sometimes it's really bad. The HDR selfies actually are not too bad. I actually kind of like the performance of the HDR selfie. But the selfie camera actually impresses with the 4K 60fps video recording option that is available and the sound recording quality is very good too take a listen to it for yourself in fact watch the video for yourself and let me know what you guys think i'm shooting at 60 fps using the xiaomi 14 and uh, this is what it looks like by the way, talking about videos, you get 4K 60 FPS video recording from all the cameras, primary, telephoto, and ultra wide. In fact, you can shoot from 0.6x to 1x to 2x to 3.2x. I did try zooming in and zooming out in while shooting a video. It's not very smooth like the iPhone is, but it's not too bad either. And at 4K 60 FPS, the video recording quality on the Xiaomi 14 is actually pretty good. I was very surprised at the kind of, uh, you know, videos that we got with it. We are Cabo da Roca. The westernmost point of Europe. But what I was using the most in my trip is that, you know, anamorphic movie mode with a very wide aspect ratio. The kind of scenes that you can frame and you can stitch them together to actually make a movie out of it. And I was shooting it in black and white a lot as well. Fantastic stuff, really. I genuinely am enjoying the music of and this movie mode is very similar to what Apple does with the cinematic mode. So it can switch between subjects automatically or you can tap to switch between subjects as well. So overall with the Xiaomi 14, the camera experience has been good. Of course, there are some inconsistencies that can be fixed, but with the fact that, you know, Xiaomi uses same 50 megapixel sensors and it's tuned the algorithm well enough to ensure that there is consistency across shots is good. But I really want Xiaomi to fix the HDR scenes where sometimes the pictures do get overblown. I really like the fact that Xiaomi is pushing the envelope of engineering flagship Android phones and the Xiaomi 14 is easily one of my favorite camera phones this year. And like I said, there's still some scope for improvement in the camera tuning itself, but right now it's still very, very good. And as a phone too, it's very premium. Xiaomi doesn't cut any corners. It gives you IP68, it gives you wireless charging, all of that. Of course, the battery life could have been better, but maybe you can switch off the always on display and do a little other tuning, maybe use it in 60 hertz to sort of improve the battery performance. At the time of shooting this review, I'm not so sure of the price we expect it to be under 70,000 somewhere in the ballpark range of the OnePlus 12 even then it will impress but if Xiaomi pulls off a coup and manages to price it at around 60 62,000 rupees then they definitely have a winner on their hands so what do you guys think of the Xiaomi 14 do you like it do you not like it let me know in the comment section below and this was it this was my review hope you guys enjoyed it I'll see you guys in the next one until then keep tracking and stay safe